Hey everybody, Nick from Resonix Sound Solutions here with another video on the AudioTech Fisher DSP software. This one is going to be a quick one. It's going to be on the signal delay section or the time menu, as you will see up top. Um, I'm gonna enable virtual channels really quick just so we can get all of the features of the time menu, which can be found right up here. So right here, we have all of our output channels, output A, B, C, D, yada, 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 um, and going all the way down the list. Now, we have a few different options uh, right out of the gate. You know, inside of each channel, we have a phase slider and we have the time, the signal delay slider. We also have mute and polarity reversal uh, buttons. We also have delay groups and we also have, you know, the display for how much uh, delay you are adding or subtracting. Um, now in the center here, we have a few more options. We have the channel mode, which will be our main. These are affecting the delays on the outputs. Or we have virtual, which this is affecting the signal delay on the virtual channels before they get to the outputs. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Remember, virtual channels are a processor before your processor. Um, so whatever you you know, do inside of virtual channels will be applied before the output filtering um, or before the output section, sorry. Um, so yeah, now we also have delay mode or distance mode. Distance mode is what is going to be selected by default when you first open the software. Um, personally, I will start with distance mode. I will set you know, distance, this, this is the mode where you measure the distance from, you know, the speaker to, you know, I measure to my, the tip of my nose. So you measure from the speaker to the tip of your nose and whatever distance you end up with is what you do here. As you can see, when I'm adding distance to channel A, it actually, you know, it adds the distance up here, but it has no delay applied. It's applying the delay to every other channel. And you can see here, as I add delay here, it will remove or add distance here, it'll remove delay from this channel. Now, delay mode is where you are doing just that. You're just delaying that speaker based on, you know, sample rate. Um, so each, you know, adjustment is you're delaying by one sample. Um, you know, the, the Ultra, the Brax, the Pro Mark III, they will have a finer signal delay resolution because they have higher sample rates. Um, but yeah, it's, like I said, very straightforward. Um, now, from here, what I like to do is, like I said, at first, I will set delay based on measured distances with a tape measure. But, you know, a lot of times this is touted as, you know, the right way to go about it, which I'm actually guilty of as well. It is a good way to go about it, but it usually doesn't end up in you know, it, it doesn't end up with 100% accuracy. And some people who are trusted in this industry are, you know, going to be fully trusted when they say set by distance, it's good enough. Um, I disagree with that. You know, so what I do after distance mode is I will change it to delay mode and start doing delays manually by ear. We are not going to go over this in this video. Um, it's just, it's too much to go over. Um, so yeah, I start with distance, end up with manual delay to make adjustments to center up, you know, each pair of driver. And then from there, you know, we can start getting into phase aligning pairs of drivers. I just posted a video or reposted my video of that earlier today. Um, now another neat feature of the Helix software is you can have delay groups, uh, this is very helpful when, like I said, aligning phase through crossovers. So let's say, you know, line output one and, you know, or yeah, line output M and line output N, you know, the two line outputs on this V12. Let's say those are the outputs that go out of the V12 into a subwoofer amplifier. What I always do is I will link them on group five and that way they just delay, you know, linked. You know, whatever I do on one, it's going to do on the other. Um, and this is a good way to, you know, let's say, again, 
I will set by distance, then go to manual, and then I'll, you know, mute everything except for, let's say, the tweeters. I'll make sure those are absolute dead center. It usually only takes slight adjustment. If you're doing larger adjustments manually, you probably have something wrong, so be weary of that. But uh, small adjustments to get them centered, then small adjustments to get the mid-range centered, and small adjustments to get the mid-base centered. You know, usually you don't really need to adjust the mid-base. Sometimes you don't even need to adjust the mid-range, but um, <coughs> yeah. And then, you know, from there, what you can do is, you know, if you want to adjust the center image as a whole, if your levels and equalization are 100% correct from left to right, but it's still not centered, that means, you know, you have a timing issue. Um, and you can you know, group a whole left side and, you know, delay it or, you know, take away delay. And, you know, it's very, very easy to control. You have rear fill, you know, you can put them on group four. And this is how you can dial in your differential rear fill by adding a ton of delay and grouping them. Speaking of rear fill, virtual channels will be helpful here for getting that extra delay that a lot of people want. Um, you will say, you will see a lot of people that want, you know, a ton of delay, like 30 milliseconds or more. This is where you're going to be able to get that on the rear outputs. If you set up your input and output configuration correctly, where you do your rear fill on the virtual channel C and D, or, you know, any of the other ones, but as long as you remember what they are, you know, you can delay them to the max and you start off with an extra 10 and a half milliseconds or 10.4 milliseconds. And you can end up, you know, with, 30 plus milliseconds of delay on a V12 and even more on some of the other models. Um, so yeah, I think this pretty much covers it. Um, you know, going into virtual really quick, you can also adjust the delay inside of the virtual channels. You'll see right here, we have the 10.4 milliseconds. Um, that said, if we link them in the time menu and we, you know, make some adjustments in here, they don't adjust what's in the time menu. Um, full disclosure, I actually do not know. I haven't actually had to do this in person. I don't really use virtual channels for delay, um, but I'm just showing you the option to. I know it's showing, you know, 10.4, 10.4 here, and in the virtual, oh wait, it actually reverted. So I wonder if I do it manually here. Yeah, so there we go. Um, it wasn't selected on virtual, so I don't know if that would if that's a little glitch in the software. Um, but yeah, make sure you double check and you have virtual channels enabled on the time menu when you are adjusting the time in here, if you ever are for whatever reason. Um, and you also have on the output menu, you also have the delay and phase right here. One thing to note about the phase polarity and time that you will find on the outputs here and in the time menu uh, here, this is not polarity. What this phase slider is, is an all pass filter, a second order all pass filter that is frequency dependent. So it's shifting, you know, the all pass filter, um, to a certain frequency and that frequency is selected by the crossover whatever crossover you have applied to that channel it will place that all pass filter in a spot on that frequency spectrum to where your crossover is 22 and a half degrees out of you know adjusted or you know 73 degrees adjusted or 180 degrees or so on and so forth I will show you right here really quickly. So we have, you know, a crossover point of, you know, let's just make this super easy, 1000 Hertz. And if I wanted to adjust this, I'll put up the, uh, you know, phase graph right here. Um, let me just change this to 24 dB, just so we know, you know, predictable, easy, you know, there's a 180 degree uh, phase rotation at the crossover 360 degrees throughout. Um, if I apply a 180 degree shift, you know, we'll see right here, we have 180 degrees of phase shift at the crossover. If I apply 180 degree, um, on the phase slider, we'll see at 1K, which is where our crossover is, our phase shift is at zero degrees. So this is just to align phase through crossovers. Um, 
This is not a feature I would recommend beginners to start getting into, only for those that truly understand how phase and crossovers work. So yeah, and again, you keep adjusting it, you know, you, it, it just shifts depending on the crossover. Now, if I adjust the crossover, you'll see it adjusts, even though we didn't touch any of this. So it is relative to what the crossover is. Um, I think that covers it for this video. And uh, I actually might have another one coming out today as well. So stay tuned. Thank you for the continued support.